Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habitifillah. The question was asked, fasting without salah is meaningless. Uh, it's just like being on a hard diet in the long days of Ramadan hasn't been completed. So what is the ruling regarding the person who leaves off the prayer but they fast? And those who pray, who do pray or don't pray while fasting, go through the days with no adab of control, like listening to music, arguing, ruining other people's daily progression. Uh, this is a very important question as the holy month of Ramadan is approaching. And first, the first issue that needs to be looked at <clears throat> from this perspective of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, with the view of Ahl al -ilm, is a, uh, the issue of uh, leaving off the prayer. And as the scholars differ regarding some of the details and the hukum of the one who leaves the prayer under certain circumstances, and we'll just briefly discuss this issue, and this will give us insight into this issue of the people who fast but actually don't pray. They don't even pray the holy month of Ramadan. Wallahu musta'an. So first and foremost, according to some of the ulama, especially the Hanabila, they take the view that tarqa salat mafruda kafir. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا جَاهِدٍ لِوُجُوبِهَا كَفْرَ كُفْرًا أَكْبَرْ بِيَجْمَا أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ So the one that uh, leaves off the prayer out of obstinance or re rejecting the obligation of the prayer has disbelief, and this is the major disbelief. This isn't the minor disbelief. Kufr al-Akbar, which takes a person out of the fold of Islam, and this has ijman. So this has consensus. The scholars are in agreement of the different madahib, uh, Hanafiya, Malikiya, Shafi'iya, wa Hanabila, that they are all in agreement that the person who leaves off the prayer and they leave it with... Uh, rejecting that it's an obligation, basically saying it's not an obligation upon me, that they have disbelieved in Islam. They have left the fold of Islam, have apostated from Islam if they had entered into Islam. And also with regards to that, he said, Islam. So he said, then as for the one who leaves the prayer entirely, it means they don't pray at all, and he believes that it's an obligation upon him to pray. He just, he feels bad. He's, he feels bad about his prayer. And he doesn't reject that, there, that Salat is an obligation upon him. This is also a type of disbelief. And he said the correct view and again, this is according to some of the scholars, because some of the scholars hold that this person is a wicked sinner. A wicked sinner. Because they believe in the Salat, but they've left the Salat. Uh, but some of Ahl al-Ilm hold the view that this person has disbelieved in Islam. They've left the fold of Islam, even if they believe Salat is an obligation, because they left the prayer. And this is because there are many evidences uh, with regards to that, uh, where, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about those people on the day of judgment who will be called to make sujood. That the, the people, they will be raised on the day of uh, judgment and they'll be asked to make sujood, sujood and they will not be able to make sujood. They will not be able to bow and prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the eyes will be uh, in fear, terrified and you will see that in their eyes and the humility and they used to be called to the prayer, meaning that they were, it was an obligation upon them before to pray in the dunya to make sujood, and, and they, they didn't uh, pray. And 
this is one of the evidences that the scholars mention uh, for those people who uh, didn't uh, who leaving one of the evidence for leaving the prayer that this person has disbelieved and that this is a characteristic of the munafikun of the hypocrites and likewise uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, said about the about entering the prayer and that this was a characteristic of the mu'minin he said fa in tabu wa aqam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem fa in tabu wa aqam as-salat wa atu zakat fa ikhwanakum fi din wa tufassalu ayati liqaumi ya'lamun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem that if they make tawbah, meaning tawbah from their disbelief, they left disbelief and come to Islam, meaning they repent and come to the fold of Islam, because this is a repenting from your the, what, the disbelief you are upon by entering Islam, and they establish the prayer, and they pay the zakat, then they're your brothers in the religion. And the... I When the fasilu... And we have explained the uh, verses, the ayat, for a people who, who, uh, uh, the people who know. Okay? So this shows us the shahid in this ayat, the main point of mentioning this verse is that the people, one of the characteristics or the conditions for them to be your brother is that they first, the entabu, so they entered Islam by, by Toba. Wa aqamu salat, and they established the prayer. Wa atu zakat, and they paid the zakat. So it lets us know that making Toba and establishing the prayer and the zakat, that these are the things that make. Uh, people, believers, your brothers. That's what makes them believers and that's what makes them your brothers. So that's evidence to say that those who do not uh, establish the prayer, then they are not your brothers, meaning they are not your brothers in faith and they are not Muslimin. Uh, also in the hadith of Jabir, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, bayna rajli wa bayna shirk wal kufr tarka salat. Uh, in the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that uh, he heard uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, or saying, that between a man and, uh, and polytheism and kufr is leaving the prayer. So this is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, in, in Sahih Muslim, in Kitab al-Iman. Uh, and also in uh, or, uh, in Kitab al-Iman. And so this hadith illustrates for us that the one uh, that between a man and disbelief and shirk, uh, you know, is leaving the prayer, meaning that establishing the prayer is a characteristic which distinguishes from the mushrikun, it distinguishes from the kafirun, it distinguishes from disbelief and polytheism, establishing the prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So leaving that prayer is absolutely uh, a wicked sin which takes which is which is kufr. Wa an Abdullah ibn Burayda an Abihi radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, in the hadith of Abdullah bin Burayda uh, on his father, as he reported on his father, عنه, who said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the contract, if you will, between us and them is the prayer. So whoever leaves it has disbelief. And so this is one of the strongest evidences that leaving off the prayer is disbelief and 
that it is uh, the major disbelief. And that's why, regardless of whether, for those ulama that hold, that regarding that mas'ala, that someone who believes in the prayer, but they left the prayer, that they are, if they believe that they are a wicked sinner, a wicked fasik, that they're in a great danger, and it is a type of kufr, meaning, in their view, it's the minor kufr. Another group of the ulama hold that it is the major kufr, it takes you out of the fold of Islam. With that being the case, and as many of the ulama, uh, you know, Ibn, al uh, Ibn Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, or first and foremost, going to the Sahaba, وَقَدْ حَكَّ uh, إِجْمَعَ Sahaba ala kufr تَرْكَ salat غَيْرَ wahid min ahl al-ilm so some more than one of the scholars from ahl al-ilm meaning some a group of the scholars uh, throughout time that they narrated or relayed that the sahaba had ijma that they had consensus on the person uh, on the uh, about the hukum the ruling regarding the person who left the prayer that they are a disbeliever that the sahaba may take fear of those people so it shows us that this is the sabil of salaf asari that uh, with regards to this ruling that uh the one who leaves the prayer is disbelief so that's why it's imperative never ever leave your prayer and with regards to that sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyyah said he came up he looked at it from 10 different ways, or he mentioned 10 different ways uh, that leaving the prayer is disbelief. Ibn al-Qayyim uh, came up with t more than 20, uh, 22 evidences that the one who leaves the prayer has fallen into the major disbelief that have left the religion, that, that, uh, Ibn al-Qayyim. And so, this shows us the danger. And a last, uh, and, and in a statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, وَقَدَّلَّ عَلَى كُفْرَ تَرَكَ صَلَاةِ كِتَابِ وَسُنَّةِ وَإِجْمَعَ صَحَابَةِ So Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, relates that the evidence for the one disbelieving who has left the prayer is the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the consensus of the Sahaba. After that, there's nothing left. So it shows that the, it's a very strong evidence for saying that the that the one who's left the prayer has disbelief. With regards to that, then, that means the one uh, that leaves the prayer, who's not praying during the holy month of Ramadan, that his siyam is not accepted. His fasting is not accepted. This, uh, in the case for those who hold the view that they have disbelieved and they've left the fold of Islam because they're not praying. So, with that strong evidence that, this, that, the, that they have left the fold of Islam, then, of course, if you've left the fold of Islam, then all of your a'mal have ibta, you know, are battle. They, they're all, your, your, your good deeds are like dust in the wind. Okay, so that lets us know it's absolutely imperative to pray and pray all the time and of course fast the holy month of Ramadan. As far as the adab of the uh, of Ramadan, uh, many of those things, listening to music, uh, looking at the Muharramat and, and things like this, these things do not break your fasting but they uh, are very dangerous and very serious and they take away a lot of your ajr. So they're sinful and they are reducing your reward because fasting is not just not eating and drinking. You know, it's also guard, safeguarding the tongue and safeguarding the eyes from the muharramat and from speaking about haram, ghiba, namima, backbiting, slander, all of these kind of things, cursing people. And so it's very important to avoid all of those and be on istiqama. And we'll talk about during the holy month of Ramadan or maybe in preparation for Ramadan at some point, or and if not during the Ramadan, we will definitely talk about uh, specific manners and characteristics of the holy month of Ramadan and the uh, the manner and characteristics of the person fasting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.